Welcome to part two of chapter one. In this chapter, you will be utilizing open and closed software, as well as creating, analyzing, and updating portfolios for positions and paths for career development. Section 3-2, we will be looking at professional documents and skill sets that are used with these professional documents. The first professional document we will review is the memorandum. The second professional document will be the block style letter. On the left is an image of a memorandum and on the right is an image of the professional block style letter. Notice though there may be similarities, there are also differences between the two. The similarities between a memorandum and a block style letter. Both of these documents have the same margins. The top is two inches, the left, right, and bottom is one, are one. The font style can either be Times New Roman or Arial. Font size, 12. Line spacing, single or SS. When you're working in a memorandum or a letter, make sure you turn on your formatting marks on the home page in the paragraph tools you will see a little backwards P that will allow you to turn on your formatting marks so that you can see spacings, margins, and tabs. Differences between a memo and a block style letter. A memo is inner office communication, meaning that the memo will stay within a particular building or location. A black style letter is sent outside a building to clients, prospective employers, uh, etc. A memorandum is initialized in the memo heading. A black style letter has a signature section at the end called the complimentary close. A memorandum has a memo heading a block style letter has the return address and mailing address at the top. In a memorandum, there is no complimentary close or a writer's name at the end. In a block style letter, you have a complimentary close and the writer's name will appear at the end of the document. Searching for words and viewing side by side. Finding words or definitions in a document. Control plus F is the shortcut for finding words in a document. When I hit Control plus F on the left side, the navigation bar will open for, so that I can search for words. If I type in the word I want to search for and hit Enter, I will get the results. The results will show all of the, the that keyword in the document. Viewing side by side. You can view two documents side by side at the same time. First, you must have both documents you want to view together open simultaneously. Go to the View tab and look under the Window Toolbar ribbon for View Side by Side and then select the document you want to open. After both documents have opened, disable the synchronous scrolling. Then reset your window position. Show Hide icon. Make sure you turn on your Show Hide icon 
when you are comparing and formatting documents. The show hide icon keeps hidden the formatting symbols such as the paragraph marks and the spacing between text. When you are trying to format layouts, you will need to see the, um, the, the, the formatting marks. So you need to make sure that that show hide or what we call that little backwards P, you need to make sure that is turned on so that the paragraph markers and the spacing between each all of the words is displayed. An important thing to remember is that just because your show hide mark or icon is turned on, note that when you print those show hide paragraph markers and symbols, they do not print. So you don't have to worry about turning them off um, unless you find them in, um, that you don't like them, then you can turn them off. But make sure you have them turned on when you're trying to format a document. The memorandum. The memorandum title. The first thing you want to do is double click inside the header at the top and then type in the word memorandum. You may put it in all caps or you can just have the first letter capitalized. It's your choice. You may do that either way. Once you have the word, the word memorandum typed in, then you need to add the title style to the word memorandum in the header. You want to make sure it is vertically, that is the header, is vertically centered up and down. Um, to do this, go to the top right corner and look for header from top. And you can do an adjustment um, just you, clicking on the drop down arrows or the up arrows to kind of get that centered. Once it looks like it's centered up and down, then you need to um, um, center the word um, vertic or horizontally that would be left to right by using the, the control E shortcut. Adding a header and a footer. A header is the white section at the very top part of a document. To access the header, either double click in the top white section of the document or go to insert and select the header icon. Footer. The footer is the bottom white section at the very bottom of the document. To access the footer, double click in the footer while white section of the document or go to insert and select the footer icon. The memorandum heading consists of the first four lines, to, from, date, and subject. The memorandum heading is double spaced Two from date and subject are placed in uppercase or what we call all caps. The information under each of the subject lines, um, each of these lines are lined up based on the subject line. Pay attention to the number of tab arrows. That is why you have to have your four many marks on so that you can see how to, to line these up. You start with your subject line and you hit the tab key once and then you work upward to your date from and to lining up each of these with the subject line. Also notice that the after the word Kathy Murphy there is an initial. When you write a memorandum, after you have proofed it, then you will sign it with your initials. Now, in this case, because this was on the computer, I used um, the t uh, some of uh, um, a text. I actually typed it in and then added a font style to it. You would normally not do that. Normally, this is sent out via um, paper, so you would have to personally initialize it with a pen and you must use cursive. You do not print. And the color of ink should be blue or black.
Looking at the memorandum, you're going to see that there is one space between paragraphs. Paragraphs are blocked. That means they're up against the left margin. So notice that you do not indent each paragraph. What distinguishes paragraphs is the spacing, the blank line spacing before and after the paragraph. How do I know when a new paragraph begins? In Microsoft Word, there is what you call a soft return and a hard return. When you type and get to the end of a line, Word automatically starts a new line for you. In other words, Word automatically word wraps a paragraph so you do not have to keep hitting the enter key every time you want to start a new line. The hard return is whenever you hit the enter key. When you hit the enter key, you add a hard return. A hard return can be seen by turning on the show hide icon or the formatting marks. Every time you see a backwards P at the end of a paragraph, in most cases, this will indicate the start of a new paragraph. Looking at the image, this is a professional block style letter. When you look at the image, can you identify a soft return from a hard return? Changing margins. To change margins, click on the Layout menu tab. Select the margin icon on the far left-hand side of the toolbar section. Click on the drop-down menu, scroll to the bottom, and select Custom Margins. When the Page Setup box opens, select the Margin tab at the top. You will see that you can change your top, bottom, left and right margins. Once you have your margins fixed, click OK. Vertical selection. When you are working with your memorandum, you will need to be able to vertically select. That means select up and down rather than horizontally across. So we want to find our change case feature which is located on the Home tab. We're going to look for the big A, little a icon to the left of the bulleted list. And then we are going to use Alt plus drag vertical selection. We're going to do this by putting our cursor in front of the first word in the list. In this case, the first word would be two and then you're going to hold down the Alt key and vertically drag down and across the text until you have the words to, from, date, and subject selected. Then let up on the Alt key, then go to the Change Case icon and select Uppercase. When you're done, if you look to the image to the right at the top, you're going to see that to, from, date, and subject are now all in uppercase. Changing your page color, or what's often called the background color. The page color adds color background to your document. To do or change your page color, uh, go to the Design menu tab. On the far right side, look for an icon called Page Color. Select the drop down menu, and you will be able to choose to have two choices. First, you can choose color 
and the color adds solid colors as page backgrounds or you can select fill effects which gives you options to add multiple colors and different styles as page background fill effects box opens and there are four tabs at the top for adding background you can use granite which has one two or preset colors you have texture patterns and picture the most commonly fill effect for memorandums and block style letters is under the texture tab and it is called parchment or blue tissue paper text watermarks to add a text watermark click on the drop down arrow under the watermark which is located on the design menu tab you can select any of the text watermarks that you want to add for example if you are sending a memorandum or a block style letter that is confidential you have the choice to put as a text watermark in the background either a vertical or a horizontal confidential watermark if you want to tell people that you do not want this document copied in the you can add a text watermark that says do not copy if you are sending a rough draft to someone you can use as a text watermark draft if you are sending something that's called sample um, like then you can use the sample watermark so when you're looking at text watermarks make sure you look at what you're really trying to say in your document if it's not confidential do not use confidential if it can not if it can be copied do not use do not copy so you have to think about which of those text watermarks that you want in your document to customize your watermark you can click on custom watermark and then you can go in and actually change the color the type of font family and the size you can even add your own personalized um, text watermark image watermark by going to the watermark icon and clicking on the drop down you can go down to where you can customize your watermark when your printed watermark box opens select picture watermark and then you're going to click on select picture when you click on select picture the insert pictures box will open and it gives you an option of whether you want to choose from a file or if you want to search for an image online page borders when you go to the design menu tab you can add page borders to your document on the far right side you will see a page borders icon when you select the page borders icon the page border menu tab will open if you look at the top of the borders and shading box there are three tabs for borders page border and shading page border is the default setup so this is what usually opens you have your choice to either select um, from the settings which means you can create your own um, type of page border from the box the shadow the 3d or you can and then you gives you options of the size of text line that you want the color and the width or you can choose from the art tab which are pre-formatted or already made borders that can be inserted into a document and styled text box a text box may be inserted into a memo or a letter whenever you have text you want to stand apart from the letter to insert a text box go to the insert menu tab 
and on the far right side look for the text box icon. Click on the drop down and then select the appropriate box. If you look on the right side of the slide, you will see that there is a memo that has a text box added to the memo. What's included in the, in the text box is the name of the company and who to call. They wanted this to stand apart from the letter, so what they did was they included a text box so the customer could, could um, easily find their telephone number. This is a good example of using a text box in a memo or a letter. The professional block style letter. Viewing side by side. When you go to format your block style letter or your memo, make sure you view um, view these the rules with the activity side by side. This will make formatting your document easier. Easier. Make sure you have both documents open. Go to the View tab. Look underneath the Window Toolbar ribbon for View Side by Side and select the document you want to open. After both documents have been opened, disable the synchronous scrolling and then reset your window position. Also make sure that you have your formatting marks turned on. Parts of a letter. The return address is the address of the person who is sending the letter. The date of the letter is written or typed right after the city, state, and zip code of the person sending the letter. After the date, leave three blank lines between the date and the mailing or address block. Here is the mailing address. This is the address of the person who is receiving the letter. You will need the person's name, address, street address, city, state, and zip. Now, it's important to note here that there is a comma after the city and that the state is in all caps, AZ, but notice there is no punctuation. Whenever you capitalize a state, like A, capital A, capital Z, or capital I, capital L, there is no need to put any punctuation after it. The mailing address, there is one blank line that follows. Then you have the salutation. This is the greeting or the hello. Notice at the end of Ms. Um, Lacante, there is no punctuation. There is no semicolon, no comma, it's just left blank. Also note here that when you are addressing someone in a letter, if they are married, um, you need to know if they are using their married name or their uh, maiden name. A lot of professional women will use their maiden name and so in that way, you would type in Ms. MS, period. This would be used just like Mr. is used for men, MR. It simply is a title. It does not indicate whether a person is married or single. If you know the person, the woman uses her married name and does use the term Mrs., then it would be Dear Mrs. Lacante. But if you are not sure whether the woman is married or single, you always use capital MS. It just means Ms. and it's just like using the term Mr. After the salutation, leave one blank line. 
there should be one blank line between all paragraphs. And notice here, the paragraphs are not indented. This is block style, and block means left aligned, or everything is put up against the left margin. Notice that after the final paragraph, we have another blank line followed by the complementary close. Notice this is the goodbye, and also notice there is no need for punctuation, no commas, semicolons, just leave it blank. Then you will leave three more blank lines after the complimentary close. This is for the signature of the person who is sending the letter. In this case, it is coming from Ms. Kathy Murphy. Um, notice that the person has a writer's name and also a writer's title, followed by a blank line after the writer's title. The writer's or the proofer's initials will be placed after the writer's title. However, if the writer and the proofer are the same, there is no need for proofer's initials. It would just be left blank. Notice there is another space, a line space, and then you can use either enclosure or attachment. When you are sending or attaching a, another document or you're enclosing with the letter another document, you need to acknowledge that. Enclosure is used when a document is being included but not attached. Attachment is used if the, if the document is being stapled or attached to the document. Highlight a memo or a letter. That is never. Highlighting should only be used by the person receiving the letter or the memo. It is never used by the person sending the document. The three no's. Never bold an entire document. Never italic an entire document. And never underline an entire document. Inserting an email hyperlink into a memo or a letter. Place your cursor in the location where you want the email link. Select link under the insert menu tab. When insert hyperlink box opens, go to the bottom left corner and select email address icon. In the email address box, type in the email address. Then click OK. Note, make sure that you proof your email address so that it is correct. Look at the image at the bottom right to see an example of how you would put an email address um, for the sender of the letter at the end of the document. Basic shortcuts. Know your shortcuts, especially if you are planning on working on computers, either through your job and office setting, or you're looking at IT. Shortcut keys. Shortcut keys are important to know, but also to use. Control A selects an entire document. Control C copies. Control E centers alignment horizontally. Control F finds a word. Control N opens a new document. Control R aligns to the right horizontally. Control S saves a document. Control V paste, cut, or copied material. Control X deletes. 
Control Y redoes. Control Z undoes. F7 does a spell check. Flag E opens the computer dialog box. F flag D puts all open documents on the task bar. Alt plus tab allows you to go through all open documents. Unit 3, Chapter 1, Shortcut Worksheet and Quiz. Go to Google Classroom and open the Unit 3, Chapter 1, Shortcut Worksheet. Complete the worksheet on your own. No sharing of answers. First, go through the worksheet and answer the shortcuts that you know. Then review the shortcut keys in the PowerPoint that you do not know and then finish the worksheet by turning it in. Turn in the worksheet through Google Classroom. Go to the class website and review on Quizlet for your Unit 3, Chapter 1, Shortcut Quiz on Kia. When you are ready to take your quiz, please let your teacher know. Accessing the Memo and Block Style Letter Rules. In Google Classroom, under the About section, Look for the block style letter rules and the memorandum rules handouts. Open both documents. Once the documents are open, download them as Word 2016 documents to your folder on your flash drive. You want two document, both documents to be saved under Unit 3. Open up and use the documents as needed. It is now time to start your memo class activity. Go to Google Classroom and look for the memo activity that is given to you underneath the stream tab. View the memo document activity and the memo rules side by side. If you do not remember how to do this, go to slide nine. Make sure the formatting marks are turned on. Make sure you have changed your default settings for the font and paragraph. Whenever you see a slash, it means to start a new line. A paragraph ends when you see a paragraph formatting mark or what we call a hard return. Continue to the next page for further instructions. Continuing with our memo activity, it is now time to format the memo according to the memo guidelines. Please look at your memo and then compare it to the memo guidelines. You want to make sure that after formatting, your memo looks exactly like the memo guidelines. When you are done formatting the document, add two appropriate skill set features to the memo. The appropriate features for a memo have been given in this PowerPoint. See slides 21 through 25 and slide 33. Make sure you save your memo activity underneath your Chapter 1 Word folder. Now that we have finished our memo, it is time to do a block style letter activity. Go to Google Classroom and download the block style letter activity that is given to you under the Stream tab. View the block letter document and the block style letter rules side by side. If you do not remember how to do this, go back and check slide 9. Make sure the formatting marks are turned on. Make sure you have changed your default settings for the font and paragraph. Whenever you see a slash in the block style letter, it means to start a new line by using the Enter key. A paragraph ends whenever you see a paragraph formatting mark or what we call a hard return. Continue to the next page for further instructions. 
the block style letter continued. Now that you have everything set, it is time to format the block letter according to your block style letter guidelines. When you have finished, your block style letter that you are formatting should look very similar to the block style letter guideline letter. Add two appropriate skill set features to the letter. The appropriate features have been given in this PowerPoint. See slides 21 to 25 and slide 33. Note here, make sure you do not use the same skill set features that you used on your memo. You want to use two different skill sets. Save the letter to your Chapter 1 Word folder. Call your teacher over to review your memo and your block style letter, letter activity. Please make sure both of these documents are open. Then continue on to the next slide for the next step in the process. You are now to review on Quizlet for your memo and block style letter quiz. When you have finished reviewing, you are to take your quiz at kia.com. Please let your teacher know you are ready to take your quiz. Make sure you keep your eyes on your own screen and you have closed out of Quizlet. Congratulations, you have just finished this PowerPoint. Please go back to the website for further instructions.